Hey everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Wired for Hybrid. Uh, in this episode, we are going to review what's new in Azure networking. We're looking at what was released and what became GA, and Mike is taking the elevator to the basement. It looks like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just getting right here in the studio, Pierre. <laughs> hey, there we go. There you are. It's just like all of a sudden, it's like, oh, I probably well. should have done that during the spacer. That's okay. <laughs> that's funny all right so we have a few um gas and a couple of preview i think uh sprinkled in there for a good measure so michael what do you got for us this month pierre what do i have for you so first thing off the bat is generally available we have gateway load balancer ipv6 support so what this brings to us now we support ipv6 traffic so you can use this when you're using gateway load balancer with your dual stack application. So just as a refresher, so everybody knows, and if you want a bigger refresher, check out Mahip and Pierre did a great deep dive on gateway load balancer recently. Uh, gateway load balancer is a skew of Azure load balancer that you use in scenarios where you have a third party network virtual appliance that sits in the middle of your traffic coming in and your traffic going to your application. So it could be something like filtering web traffic. So you've got an NVA sitting there that your traffic goes into that, then that through gateway load balancer, and then load balancer sends it to the customer application wherever it is. So with this update, now you can support IPv6 front ends and back-end pools when you're working with gateway load balancers. Okay, Why okay. is this important? So, is this Go. IPv6 in front of the uh, load balancer or behind the load balancer or both? Both. So the IP, so, you know, you set up your, your IPv6, you know, you, your front-end addresses, your public IP addresses, uh, you set up, Everything's running IPv6 and IPv4 when you set up a dual when you set up a dual stack configuration. So it'll have an IPv4 and an IPv6 front end, and then it works with the IPv4 and IPv6 stuff you set on back of it. So yeah, it's dual stack all the way through. Okay. And so why is this important? Well, we all know that IP addresses ran out a while ago. If you talk to our buddy Eddie, Ed Horley, he's been talking about it for years and years and years. But we even did a, we even did an episode with uh, John Flores about uh, IPv6. Absolutely. So it's one of those things that more customers are moving to utilizing IPv6, and many of them are doing it in this fashion. They're not just turning off IPv4 and going to IPv6, they're doing it a, in a dual stack scenario so that you can you have access to both of those. So this allows you to be able to utilize your gateway with your network virtual appliances in that IPv4, IPv6 dual stack scenario, which is pretty cool. That's so very we've cool. Got, yep, so we got plenty of, uh, we got, uh, check the show notes. We've got plenty of resources for you how to deploy a dual stack load balancer. If you're still trying to get up to date on creating a gateway load balancer, we've got a great tutorial for you on that. And what do you got for us, Pierre? Should we go? Let's go back and forth. That's always fun. Yeah. Um, my first item is uh, general availability, rented mouth, general availability. Uh, of uh, sensitive, that's a mouthful, sensitive data protection for application gateway web application firewall. That's quite an acronym. Yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping that we work on that name. But anyway, uh, basically it means that the uh, regional web application firewall that we've 
been talking about for a long time and we've even had um no we are planning a deep dive on uh waf and now supports um uh, some protection for sensitive information because really uh windows app, uh, web application firewall when things happen when it's saving it's logged for debugging or for support or for something like that it logs everything that that needs to be logged and in some cases you can have ip addresses uh username uh potentially password depending on how the application is set so all of that sensitive information is saved in the logs and the logs are clear text and anyone that has operational access to the logs for operations uh, can actually see that. So you see, you see where the problem is, rather. Absolutely. So now uh, you can actually create uh, a scrubbing rule that goes through all of your logs and, and replaces the sensitive data with a bunch of um, stars. So you'll have all your logs and they'll just be kind of X'd out uh, of the uh, sensitive information. And the, the sensitive information uh, lob scrubbing that is uh, supports uh, different variables. So header names, cookie names, argument names, uh, post argument names, JSON names, IP address. So there's a, a, a big push on how you secure not only the access, but how the information is logged. Because if you can parse the log, then you have the information you need to, to potentially compromise the environment. Absolutely. Yeah, this is a, this is a great add-on. Because I know, uh, you know, one of the things that we're, we're seeing a lot, and this should make sense to everybody, is, uh, you know, internal IP addresses, those are, that's sensitive information in this day and age. And so a lot of this information that's included in there, you know, it's like back in the old days where people would dump the, uh, dump your physical memory and pull up passwords from there and, you know, that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, yeah. This is cool. we're not, we're not quite there, uh, in terms of vulnerability for, for, with WAF, but if, if a customer is coming in from their own network, hitting the web application firewall, uh, authenticating through that firewall and accessing the application, all of that information gets logged. Yep. Um, so now we can scrub it from the log. Very cool. Very cool. That's a cool add-on. Yeah. How about you? What's your second item? So the second item is actually something we talked about back in January. So we have a, for Azure Front Door and Azure CDN, we have a domain fronting update. So- Okay. If you if you remember back to our January episode, we talked about where where domain fronting was added into Azure Front Door and Azure CDN. So as a refresher, domain fronting is a technique that involves using different domain names in the server name indication, the SNI field of the TLS header and the host field of the HTTP host header. It hides traffic to a specific website by masking it as a different domain. It's one of the many ways that attackers will obfuscate. Yes, I got it on the first time. Their activities as they're going. So it's it's one of those things that hackers and um, attackers will use in order to try to 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 mask what they're doing and and uh, and gain access during their attacks. So. What we had added back in September is that we added to the update, we put in domain front blocking restrictions for that. And this is one of those cases where this is a great example of how we take customers' feedback and see what customers are doing and how they need to use the products and make changes based on those. So what we're doing is we're making an update so that instead of blocking the request, when the SNI and host headers don't match, we allow the mismatch as long as the two domains are added to the same subscription. Okay. So what was happening is that 
because they had people that had multiple domains were running into some problems with all of these. So this is one of those, hey, you know, like a lot of times what happens when when stuff's done in security is like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna put the full shield up. Let's wait for the I, I used this the other day and somebody laughed. The scream test. You remember the scream yep. test, right? Is you turn something many off times. And, and you just you just wait for somebody to yell. And so uh, we got our customers feedback. We're making those changes. So it makes it ma still maintaining domain blocking, but allowing the customers to be able to manage it better and to utilize it, especially in scenarios where they have multiple domains with their data. So then starting the eighth, all existing domains will have this put into place. So previously it was just for newly created. All domains will have this put into place. Um, and then we've got some great documentation that talks you through, walks you through what this is all about, how it works, um, what gets triggered, all of those sorts of things. But some, you know, some really cool additional functionality again, Give us your questions, send us your feedback, let us know how the products are working for you. And we'll try to best to get that passed along. And who knows, maybe it'll help us build better products. Absolutely. Uh, this is how most of our development is done by customer feedback. Absolutely. So I think um, you've got one more for me. I have one more and it's dealing with the firewall but not the web application firewall, but with the actual uh, Azure firewall. So there's new capabilities with Azure firewall that uh, new monitoring and logging capabilities with uh, Azure firewall. So right now we, uh, as of now, because it's generally available as of uh, end of September, we now support uh, new structured logs and also new uh, latency probe metrics. So what that means is that it provides a more detailed views of some of the firewall events. Um, it also, when it writes to the log, it hits uh, multiple categories now. So network rule was was added. What NAT rule was, was used? What threat intelligence log was used to deny, for example? What IDPS uh, log? Uh, DNS proxy, internal FQDN uh, resolving failure log, application rule aggregation logs, uh, network rule aggregation logs, and all of that stuff. So these are all new structured tables that have been added to the logs in a way to give a lot more detail as to what's going on when somebody's coming across that is either uh, uh, allowed or denied uh, access to your system through Azure Firewall. There is a couple of previews on that. So a top flow uh, log, which is basically, it shows the top connection that are contributing to the highest throughput into a firewall. So that's in preview, uh, but it'll eventually make its way to the list of, of new rules. Uh, and the flow trace. So a trace as to the full flow of information. So the SIN, SIN ACK, FIN, FIN ACK, RST, uh, invalid flows, uh, all that will eventually uh, BGA, but currently is in preview in terms of logging capabilities. Well, awesome. Well, that's yeah. some good stuff. Yeah, we had some really good stuff. And for all of you watching, uh, all of the links will be uh, in the show notes below or uh, look at the address here on the, uh, um, the blog post that will summarize all of it. And of course, if you like this type of content, please uh, like and subscribe and uh, smash that bell so you get notified for new content. Absolutely. With that being said, uh, Michael, thanks for uh, taking the time to uh, to basically run the show uh, last month uh, without me. Absolutely, absolutely. I I I realize how much work it is that you put in for that, and um, I absolutely love doing it. Absolutely love getting together with you, and. Wanted to just call out to everybody. Our next show is going to be coming up in November, which, as we know, Microsoft Ignite is just around the corner. Uh, so depending on when our next show lands, we may or may not have a lot of stuff for us. Or Pierre and I might decide to do some special things. As always, great to see you, Pierre. Thanks for listening, everybody. And see you in the next episode of Wired for Hybrid.
Cheers. Cheers.